Um, when do you remove eggs? I always recommend that you remove eggs as they are laid because it, it will increase the clutch size. If an Amazon lays every two to three days and you keep taking the eggs and the normal clutch is four eggs, you may get six, seven eggs. The best way to take the eggs is if the pair comes out. If they do not uh, come out, use an egg whisk. And I'm going to grab one from my kitchen um, so you can see what an egg whisk is. And I'm going to perform egg removal so that you can understand. Hold on one second. Uh, everyone, please uh, open off your mics and videos. If someone is presenting, please speak that. I am coming back. So, we have an egg. This is a chicken egg. And we have a whisk. And you can attach a handle to this. So how do you remove an egg from a pair of macaws that are, that are very aggressive? You reach in, they're going to bite you. You will walk away bleeding. But if you distract them with one hand and with the other, you do this. If the whisk is flexible enough, it will, the bars will move and they will encapsulate the egg. So I'll do it once more, you see? I can pull that egg without the bird doing anything. The bird may attack the top part of the wire, but you should have your hand. So you use with another. That is probably the most efficient way of removing an egg from a nest. Obviously, if the pair leaves a nest, your job is a lot easier. When I, when I look away, I'm looking at the questions. Should you then replace eggs? No, if you are going to be incubating and you want to increase production, you're going to take the eggs as they're laid. So I'll give you an example of how we do with our Amazons. Amazons are seasonal nesters. They will nest uh, here in Florida starting in December uh, through about April. Um, different species nest at different times. The first to nest are the yellow napes. The last to nest are the yellow shoulder. So as they lay, we take the eggs out. And we know when there is going to be a break in the clutch because five or six days go by and there's no egg. So we pull one egg, it's, an egg is laid, we take it. Second egg is laid, we take it. Third egg, fourth egg, fifth egg. Six, sometimes they lay seven eggs, we take those. And then we notice that there's a span of about 10 days that we don't see eggs. We stop taking eggs. We then allow the female to re-clutch, and she will be allowed to keep those eggs. If you added a glass egg to the nest, you will stop the process. You don't want to stop that process. You want that bird to recycle. So you take the first clutch, you leave the second clutch. With species like cockatoos that can break eggs, if you want to give them a chance to incubate, take the real egg out and give them a glass egg. If it's macaws, uh, macaws tend to be set. They'll lay four or five clutches a year, so we let them incubate their eggs. They're good. With African grays, we find that it's best to let them initiate incubation and pull the, the eggs when they're partly incubated. Because if we take the eggs, it's not going to speed the process. There is a natural cycle that will happen irrespective of when we take the eggs, whether we take them the day they were laid or 21 days later. We give them a chance to incubate. How many clutches should you take from a pair in a year? 
egg laying is not taxing on the system. A female basically sits on the eggs. Yes, she's pulling calcium from her blood to create the shell, but if you have a good diet, that's not a problem because they're replenishing that. It's like me drinking water and having somebody fill it up with a, with a pitcher. So I take a sip, somebody adds water. I take a sip, somebody adds water. That's why a good diet is so important. The act of incubating and laying doesn't really hurt the birds. It is rearing the chicks and taking them, and rearing the chicks and taking them that weakens them with cockatiels, which will breed constantly. I recommend no more than three clutches a year. So 12 months are allowed to raise three clutches. The pair should be taken out. They should be put in a flight cage, given a chance to fly, and then they can be given a nest again. So different species are treated differently. With conures, you can, they like to sleep in the nest. You stop them from breeding by removing all the wet components in the diet. You give them just a dry diet. And there is a maintenance pellet. We feed pellets. I always recommend pellets because they avoid a lot of nutritional problems. Um, you, you give them maintenance pellets. You don't give them any fruits. You don't give them any vegetables. You don't give them anything else get a dry diet, and that dry diet will take them out of breeding condition. So what if a female is a chronic egg layer? How do we stop it? Macaws are notorious for this. We want to go ahead and, and look first at in the environment. If the bird has a nest, breed. So we remove the nest. Um, for chronic egg layers, you also want to give them a very Spartan diet, just pellets, because anything else that you give them that's wet will stimulate them into breeding. Conyers, for example, you can literally program them to breed when you want to. You put them on an only dry diet. And it's only maintenance pellets, nothing, nothing else. To get them to breed, you do pellets at least six, eight, ten weeks. You put them on this dry diet, Spartan diet, and then you switch by adding vegetables to it. You add some sprouted seeds. You enrich the diet. The minute you enrich it, they will go ahead and start breeding. And the difference between a Spartan and an enriched diet has to be, the switch has to be overnight. It's not gradual. It has to be dramatic. It has to be from turning on the light to shutting off the light. It's got to be that dramatic. They've got to notice that there's been a change. Incubation. So when you incubate, you need to understand that humidity plays a key role. That if you live in a climate that is humid, you do not need to add more water to the incubator. If your birds can hatch the eggs in the nest without any assistance, you can hatch them in an incubator. What I do recommend is that you play dominoes with the eggs. And what it means is the egg that's up here to, today will be moved here. This one will be moved here. The next day, this one will be moved down here. This one will be moved here. Move the eggs every day in a circular pattern. Why? Because incubation, incubators along the perimeter always have a different temperature than in the center. And we want that egg to experience all of the temperatures throughout the incubator. Move the eggs around. Manually turn the eggs also. Why do you manually turn them? Because if the egg is going to turn, and I'll mark this egg so that you can see where, where I'm getting at. If we only allow manual incubation, can everybody see the spot? I'm going to see without breaking the egg. 
and the incubator does this. The egg will invariably come back to the same spot. We don't want that. We want that egg to be moved like this one time by hand, early in the morning, another uh, uh, in the evening like this, maybe a night like this. We want to make sure that that egg moves an awful lot. We also want to rotate the eggs around. So when artificially incubation, you have to play with the eggs. You just don't put the eggs in the incubator and walk away and do nothing. It does not work that way. You need to take an active role in the incubation area. When you lose chicks in incubation, there are many factors. High humidity often makes it very difficult for the eggs to hatch. Bacteria in the parents will be transferred to the egg and it will affect hatching. Just this week, um, I was talking to a breeder there who kept saying, well, my eggs just don't hatch, they all die. I said, can you send me a picture of your aviary? There was that much feces on the bottom of the cage. Those birds were being constantly subjected to bacteria that was affecting their eggs. They had bacteria in the gut because they defecate, they eat, they came in contact with, 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 with filth, they defecated, and they laid eggs through the same opening. So they defecate and they lay eggs through the same opening. That egg was coming out infected. That bacteria was slowly incubating in that egg and eating the embryos. So when you lose embryos, it's humidity, it's bacteria, or maybe inadequate terms. You want that egg to turn about every 90 minutes. So, I, and I don't want a full turn. I want an incremental turn. I want this. And then when we come around, we move it. So we do this and then the egg will do this. Or in reverse. We want that egg to experience every possible move in a day. Yes, you can add antibiotics to the eggs, but it's like chopping off your hand and putting a Band-Aid on it. It needs major attention. Why focus on trying to inject an egg when your problem is in the aviary and your problem is gonna be experienced in every egg and every chick? Hygiene is first and foremost. There is a tendency there to use a lot of tonics and things. I caution against those because one, many have not been proven. Um, I see all the time uh, birds, lorikeets, for example. Somebody will send me a picture of a dead lorikeet. Can you send me a photo of the, of the inside of the bird? And the bird's liver and organs have been destroyed. Why? Because the breeder was adding all kinds of things, tonic and uh, cumin and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, turmeric. Many of these elements need to be used with extreme caution because they will have an effect on the egg and on the chick and on the breeder. So because they've not been proven be cautious, verify that they work before you start adding it and losing birds. Um, once a pair begins to breed, you don't wanna risk that pair. Give them the best conditions possible. You also cannot breed birds with antibiotics. A favorite question is what medication can I give my birds to breed? Why do you need medication? If your birds are healthy, they will breed. You can't medicate a bird into breeding. You can get a bird healthy and get it to breed. Very important to understand. And I know that I am dictating a lot of rules here. I'm doing it because I'm your brother, because I want you to be successful. If I didn't want you to be successful, I wouldn't be here today talking to you.
I wouldn't be answering all the questions that I answer every day. And I wouldn't be traveling there to meet you and to discuss with you bird keeping. I want you to be very successful. I have the highest hopes on aviculture there. I said this when I first arrived in India and I repeat it every day. I see the highest potential ever in India because you are young, you are very intelligent, and you have an incredible passion for aviculture. Do things right. And you will be teaching me how to breed birds because I know you will find out many things that I have yet to figure out.